1972 version of Sleuth is one of my favorite films of all time, easily in my top five, top three even. I only discovered it because it was popping in and out of the bottom of IMDb's top 250 movies for a time. I'd never heard of it before, and no one I knew personally had seen it either. The description seemed interesting, and I enjoyed Kane's and Olivier's acting, so I decided, eh, why not? By the time I finally got around to watching it, I was blown away that this movie is as underground as it is. It's buried in cinema's history, yet easily could go head-to-head -head with any of Hitchcock's thrillers in my mind. The movie can be semi-difficult to find. Several versions on Amazon range from 70 to nearly 100 US dollars new. YouTube offers the movie with Greek subtitles, which could act as a passable way for some people to view the film. Point being, you have to go out of your way to be able to see this thing. It's not as easy as simply searching on Netflix. You may notice that there is a 2007 version of the film starring Michael Caine yet again, but this time opposite Jude Law. This might be an easier way to consume the story that is sleuth, but from what I've seen, it's probably best just to steer clear, even though it's Kenneth Branagh in the director's chair. I haven't seen it, so I can't vouch, but having seen the 1972 and supposedly superior version, I think I'm fine. Sleuth tells the story of Milo Tyndall, a hairdresser who is invited to the large manor of Andrew Wyke, a successful crime novelist. Andrew exposes a secret of Milo's and proposes a lucrative offer to him that would benefit them both. This is all I'll actually say about the story here. This is all you really should know before watching it yourself. The movie reveals subsequent information at its own pace, and each new plot point changes the story in some way. You'll never truly know what's coming next. And the kicker is that it's more or less just these two actors, in and around the manor, for the entire 2 hour 30 minute duration of the film. It's adapted from a 1970 play of the same name, so the dialogue heavy script makes complete sense, yet with the screenplay resting on the shoulders of Kane and Olivier, the movie blows by like a breeze. I have seen this thing three times since I first discovered it a few years ago, and during those three times, I have never been bored once. Every word these guys say sounds like poetry, and the end of each sentence has you eagerly awaiting for the next to begin. The film moves through three distinct acts and ends in a surreal climax. I won't spoil what happens in the last two acts, but the movie is actually constructed in such a deceiving way that you're being tricked the entire time and you don't even realize it. I'm not going to say any more about this, but if you end up watching the movie, come back to this video afterward and click on the IMDb link in the description below. I think you'll be surprised if you hadn't already figured it out by the end of the movie. So in short, watch this thing. More people need to, as it's criminally hidden in the undercurrent of cinema right now. And that's it. Thank you everyone for watching.